Hello, good morning, Rafael. How are you? Good morning, Yong. How are you as well? I really appreciate you joining me our next wave uh, interview series as a founder of Zero Capital, and I'm really the one of pioneer and woman that are really driving the technology innovation in the intersection of biology and tech that can really make the difference in our lives. Love to have our discussion today. I think it will be good to reset a bit and talk about you and about your career and being a, a technologist, a medical doctor, and the accomplished venture capitalist. It will be really great if you can talk a little bit about your career background and also what made you successful as we are. And I also want to congratulate you getting the recognition from French government, the Legion of Honor, which is a very a very rare and very special recognizement of your contribution. Thank you so much and uh, I'm, I'm not realizing yet about the Légion d'honneur. Sometimes I'm, I'm wondering if they have done a mistake, but uh, apparently not. So I'm, I, I hope I will, I will uh, you know, honor this uh, Légion d'honneur to serve not only France, uh, but uh, uh, you know, obviously Europe and beyond in terms of uh, what I've been passionate for, which is uh, patient, uh, patient and healthcare, not only patient, human being. And it had been my main driver uh, for my whole career. So starting as a, as a medical doctor, and I spent five years taking care of patients, mostly with leukemia. It had been very much, uh, you know, a trigger for me uh, to uh, understand that is, uh, you know, it's. I would like to help the patient and to 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 do it by different ways and and accelerating also access to to drugs and treatment for for patient. Um, so uh, after these five years in uh, practicing in uh, in uh, mainly uh, clinical hemato oncology. Uh, I uh, spent uh, also four years with the French NIH in CERN, uh, that is, uh, um, you know, uh, to do research actually, molecular biology and uh, immunology, and it was to understand behind the patient, you know, what, what is the science behind, um, and I, I liked it very much. I've been lucky to publish in great reviews, including uh, Nature uh, reviews, uh, and to make try to make progress for that, but it was not going enough fast for me, uh, fast in terms of how to get results for, for the patients. I was intrigued by innovation at that time, so 18 years ago, more than 45% of the drugs sold by the big pharma are, or the treatment, innovative treatment, are coming from the small startup, from the biotech, biopharma, small startup. And I was intrigued and, and I, I looked further, I met different people, and then it's how I directly from this academic world, you know, medicine and science, I went to venture world uh, and joining Sofinova Partners, that is, uh, you know, one of the oldest uh, firm, VC firm in, in, in Europe and US. Uh, but I, I, I joined the, the Paris uh, uh, one and I joined as an analyst, uh, again, directly knowing nothing about uh, this business. Uh, and I grew up into the firm uh, as a partner and then, uh, and then managing partner and learned the investment, obviously, uh, but also really how through the investment and, and backing and helping entrepreneurs, uh, uh, how to make uh, you know, drugs finally to, to the patient. But I think that it'd be really great if you can also talk a little bit about how do you see the, um, what are the key trends that you see in the uh, medical field today or biomedical space that are really exciting, that can really have an impact on patient care and really the convergence of technology between IT and medicine, when they come together, it can do some special things, I hope. So I'd like to get your perspective of the the t dimension of biology and dimension of technology, when they come together, can it make a bigger impact and how do you see that going forward? We need to, to think and to work as an ecosystem. It's why when I said, you know, multi-talented team, it's, it's really working why ecosystem because bringing indeed all this technology, even though we don't invest as in, in, a, in a technology uh, health tech per se, nevertheless, we push our entrepreneurs uh, and, and even us, we are working with companies that could, again, serve better and, you said it, it's very long. It's very long to, to get to a drug, uh, to a treatment. It's very long and it's, uh, it's uh, also complex or let's say sophisticated. So not only you need people with know-how, but we need, and it's, we need to bring this technology. And I think it has the positive things of COVID crisis is that 
we, we, it is accelerating to use these tools and this technology to, to, to do it better, optimizing and accelerating. Clearly, the, 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 to, to give you an example, the, the, what we've seen with the COVID crisis is that the, all the clinical trials that were not for COVID had been stopped at some point. Now they are catching up, particularly in oncology, but otherwise, so, you know, you have still severe disease that needs new treatment. And uh, they, they, uh, they realize, the, the, you know, the agencies, the companies, that the, all the delay, because finally it was, it should have happened before, but all this digitalization to make, for example, a clinical trial with, uh, you know, remotely, uh, to, uh, to make it uh, faster. So that's one example. So, you know, how the patient, when the patient has to come back to the hospital to make several tests, uh, it, it, how, how to optimize that such as you, don't, you, you save time and you have better results because of this digitalization. So that's one. Second is to, um, it's some example, huh, to, um, uh, how to, to uh, use all this data. What, what is great with uh, healthcare and, and development of drugs particularly is that everything is published. So um, all, the, all the tools of the tools and the technology to, uh, to, to take this data and, and help to go faster and, and, and to uh, also uh, be right, uh, for example, a drug that is a, for a more targeted population of patients. So, so yeah, so different example, just to say that there is a lot to do and I would like to, to ask you the question, what is how you could help here? I'm sure you and you, especially you, young, but also your uh, uh, fabulous uh, uh, company and institution, how you could help and and uh, you know for for what is coming for COVID, but also further. Uh, what, what, how do you see this this marriage? Uh, but um, also, what kind of technology uh, we could uh, we could get to help finally to get uh, the right uh, treatment uh, for for this very severe disease. So our perspective, an IT person perspective, I see a lot of things that we do in biology can impact IT, and a lot of things that we do in IT can impact biology. So for instance, when you're thinking about uh, AI, often people think it's a totally different things, but actually our human brain is in a way modeled and helping us to process tons of data with a very small power. So, Clearly, there's a lot of architecture in our brain, which is very much of a parallelized many processor that are driving the data that are helping us to run applications. And this neuromorphic processing is clearly helping AI. And then, of course, a lot of things that we do in IT can also help biology. And the, uh, for instance, I'm hoping the Samsung's new mobile phone can give you better insight about our body by monitoring your activities, the so things around what you do, your preference, they can all together give you better insight about, about our mental health, as well as our health information that can give you some preventive warning in the process that we believe that uh, we can be able to change the dynamics of healthcare from reactive to proactive. And that's an example of how I think technology can contribute. But obviously, these things are all kind of in the process. I think we talked somewhat around the technology and IT and bio on how it related. Maybe the subject I also want to talk about is also your passion around really role model. Uh, clearly, the uh, uh, number of the professionals uh, in women, in particular venture capital, uh, isn't really that big of uh, representation. Maybe today around 15% of the venture partners are uh, female. But I want to get your perspective, what you're doing in terms of, uh, I know you are doing a lot of leadership and, the, uh, and also playing a role of uh, development of this, um, uh, the, the female entrepreneurs as well as venture capital society. So could you give me a perspective around how you're involved and what you're doing about this? Yeah, I know that's a topic, uh, one of my passion. Uh, so uh, women as a diversity, but also uh, uh, because I realized more than 10 years ago that uh, women are key for healthcare. Again, here talking about acceleration, uh, it doesn't mean that men cannot, but women, when you think about it and there are more and more data, 
they are they are an accelerator of healthcare. Actually, in the, you know, it's uh, it's by uh, you know history since uh, the time of the time, uh, the, the the women they are the one taking care of the two extreme part of uh, life. You know, the elderly. Uh, uh, people and the, and the children. Uh, uh, I remember a study of um, analysis of JNJ uh, in 2017, uh, looking at uh, you know role of women in uh, in families, and uh, it's 80% uh, of the decision in healthcare are taken by women in uh, you know in families. So 80% A0. So and then there are more and more data. If you look at even clinical trial uh, or scientific paper, when you have women, it's uh, the d the data are are different. So this is about diversity, but also a specific role of uh, of women. I think since uh, history, uh, and I realized that 10 years ago. Uh, but also I realized that we were not enough. Uh, women, obviously, uh, you you talked about numbers, 15% in VC group. But when you look at entrepreneur, uh, uh, women entrepreneur, uh, they are they are like uh, financed by uh, VC. They are two uh, percent, I think, or maybe now it's five percent. So it has increased a little bit. So uh, I, I realized that we were not enough also together helping each other. So it's a question of role model, but also even inspiring each other. And, um, and helping each other because uh, with this collaborative uh, uh, mindset. So I, I founded an association more than 10 years ago named WITH uh, for women innovating together in healthcare. Uh, and it's really with you, with to be together uh, to, um, to make pro progress for, for healthcare. Obviously it is to promote women but to serve finally healthcare, that is our common passion, uh, and without obviously excluding uh, uh, men and our network. So uh, it has started like that. So this group is, is quite what I call accomplished women and generous. So accomplished meaning quite senior and, and experienced women and sharing. And already among experienced women, there is a need to, to share and to, and to help each other. Uh, already that, but what um, I, I uh, so through this group uh, we are we are helping women to also evolve in their career. Obviously, even they are already uh, uh, senior, you know they could change because the beauty of this uh, of healthcare is that you you have so many you know different uh, roles you could get uh, in, uh, across the value chain. And uh, I would like to to help young women to save time <laughs> because again obsessed by acceleration, but finding to serve the society and not only uh, ourselves. And so the after with, uh, we are now creating, and this is with, with JETO, with the fund, we are creating a foundation that is here to help the younger women in university, to help them, to push them to become entrepreneur, or at least to value their, their uh, project and the research in every uh, you know, benefit for healthcare. So it's not only drugs here or biotech, it's all about health tech and uh, you know would love to interact with with you and uh, think about how we could promote these these women young women in universities to to make their own uh, own project and help finally uh, benefiting the patient so it's really interesting to hear the two different angles so clearly health industry does have a very large woman population and and, and participating but across the uh, different segment and disciplines, you want to have a dialogue and collaboration so they can be able to encourage each other. And then the other side is really going after the, the seed of a potential power of women through the entrepreneurship, uh, even university programs like you're doing. I would love to hear more about it. I think we could play a role in helping maybe entrepreneurships in earlier age, particularly supporting uh, diversity programs uh, that are part of a, uh, something that are very meaningful and increasing the number of uh, entrepreneurship from one or two percent to much higher rate than what it should be. So uh, that's really a great uh, initiative and something that I believe we need to continue to work on. Let me ask you two questions. If you were being able to give a, a, a message to a mostly the bosses of today, which is male, right? If you think about most corporations like Samsung and others, a lot of times it's 80% plus is a male um, bosses or managers. What message would you give to them to encourage women to play a better role in the organizations? And that's one question. 
The second question, so one is about the male boss. Second question is really about the new prospective female employee that are approaching the job. What message would you give to them as a way for them to be successful in a still organization that are still very male-oriented uh, communities and organizations they're joining? So <laughs> I'm trying to to think um, at the same time what uh, what I uh, I've done right and what I've done wrong in the in the past because indeed it's a very male uh, uh, dominated um, but uh, even it is evolving uh, clearly I think uh, that uh, uh, you know first first not not try to be a man for sure. <laughs> Um, uh, we are we are different. We bring uh, it's it's you know it's like diversity. Uh, um, it's needed uh, diversity in competencies, diversity in uh, in uh, you know not only male women but races, culture. I mean it's, it's how we are we are more obviously successful. Uh, but it's diversity with I inclusiveness, and that's very important. And I would recommend, as you ask, uh, to to a woman that she identify uh, around her and in, in with a uh, you know, male boss and uh, this male environment, who are the male that are, that are much more you know, uh, open to this uh, inclusiveness. Uh, so that's one. And, and the second is, is to not to be, I would say, slowed down by you know, some reaction uh, or some, you know, in a way to be proactive here as well, to, to go, to, go to, to follow your, your, your way, your path, uh, and uh, and not to lose negative energy um, to change uh, the the world here. O although I think we should try to change behaviors, but the way I think for women to change these kind of behaviors is to demonstrate our success. Uh, and through successes, we could help other women, but also you know then let's 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 say to men that you know they, they, they are not the only one to to participate to the success so it's by demonstration and go as fast as possible to do that not listening to this negative energy very good advice hopefully we can continue to work with the startups to encourage the entrepreneurship as well as the leadership as well as the diversity to solve some big problems over today so thank you Thank you very much and uh, so uh, well done for all what you do for, for the others. <laughs> Thank you. Great.